Welcome to the Jazz Flight Podcast. I'm your host, Daryl Scott, and together we will dive into the lives and careers of the jazz legends who have left a rhythmic imprint on the world. Be prepared to reminisce on the highs and the lows of their musical journey and the trials that sculpted their timeless musical gems. We'll preserve the legacy of these extraordinary maestros and find inspiration in the melodies of their lives. Subscribe now and never miss a beat. Now, let's get to the show. Welcome to Jazz Flight, the podcast. I'm Daryl Scott. Um, our guest today, youngster, but he, he's had so many accolades, and I'm not going to talk about them because I believe they should talk about them themselves. Um, he's got a big date on, on April 19th. We'll get into that later on in the show, but once again, we'll let him talk about it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, Randy Scott. No relation to me. <laughs> Randy, how thank are you, you today? I'm well, thank you so much for having me. Uh, it is a pleasure to be okay. here. Thank you very much, sir. So my, my first question is, because I am a, uh, a saxophone nut, why did you pick the saxophone? So I was, I think I was about eight years old. My mother was playing Grover Washington Jr. records all day and night in the house. And I, I noticed that <laughs> right behind you. Um, and she was a fanatic. She had every record. And it came time in the fourth grade to select an instrument. And I I had my heart set on the drums. Mm -hmm. And she said, she said, You need to you need to play the saxophone. And then she and my dad took me to a Grove Washington Jr. concert. And at mm -hmm. this time I was living in uh I was living just outside of Philadelphia. And um uh, from that moment on I was hooked. He I mean, it was sold out. Um, the crowd was going crazy. He was playing like I've never seen anybody play. And I, I said, okay, that's what I want to do. So I started in the fourth grade, um, started to excel at it. And then I, then uh, when I turned 12 years old, I got a straight A report card. And my reward was to meet Grover. Wow. And so my parents set it up and they... Uh, took me to this. He was filming a commercial for donating blood to the Red Cross, mm -hmm. and they and for whatever reason, I took my horn with me to this meeting. And I'm I had no intentions of playing my horn in front of Go Grover, but I took it. He ended up using it in the commercial. Oh, and, um, and from that moment on, from from that moment until the till the day he passed, we became great friends he was my mentor um it was through his advice and encouragement when i was trying to figure out which college to attend i had a few different scholarships um he's the reason i ended up in michigan mm -hmm. uh, with the with the, the decision in uh school so yeah he was i miss him dearly he whenever i was in the same city uh as him he'd call me and had me on stage um we i played with him many times and just miss him that, that, so yeah that's that's, a, that's my story <laughs> that's a great story um uh, thank i've you. had the i've had the opportunity to meet him and, and talk to him before, obviously before he passed um mm -hmm. and, and he was just he was coming to town we had talked i'm sitting at home the phone rings the wife answers and goes there's some guy on the phone that says he's grover washington jr and i'm like yeah right sure right I pick up the phone and it's him. He's like, "What? Wow. You wouldn't think I'd call?" He goes, "If you got time, let, let's just go have lunch or something." I'm like, "You really wow. think I'm going to turn you down?" No. So, we we sat around mm -hmm. for a couple hours and just talked. A huge fan, as you can see, I have um, yes a lot of stuff. So I, obviously, now you've made me deviate from my questions, but this is cool. Oh no, no worries. <laughs> what's what's your favorite? And I don't know if just one favorite will come up, but what's your favorite Grover Washington tunes? 
I I have to say, so I was already a fan of this song, but then when I when I met him and I showed him, I think my parents made me bring my report card because they mm -hmm. wanted him him to see what the reward was. Right. And, and he wrote on my report card, "Let it flow." Let it flow. Right. And that has been that one. I mean, there's so many. That one, wine light. I mean. It's a lot, but I, I'm I'm a huge, huge fan, and yeah. So obviously, he is one of your influences. Yes. And this is a question I've kind of always asked. From that influence, what did you take from it? Style, mm. positioning. What What did you get from his playing? So, I, what I really got was um, the focus on tone. Mm -hmm. and tone development because whenever I heard him play it was just so soothing I mean mm -hmm. his sound was just you know it was it, it was it he could play anything you know that was the other thing he was a technician a lot of people don't know he could play bebop and, and anything right um and he but I mean his, his the, my biggest takeaway and I think it was because I was trying to sound so much like Grover mm -hmm. is I was always focused on how can I make my horn sound like him how can I get the same tone right I, of course I was trying to play the, the notes as well but it was mainly I was focused on his tone and um and that was one of the things that he encouraged me to really focus on was tone and tone and technique um and that led me to my decision to go to Michigan State and study classical music mm -hmm. um, because that's kind of like the foundation of all of that. But but yeah, that was, that was my biggest takeaway is just his the, his sound. His sound was just so and he had a he had a voice. You know, there's as you know, there there's a sea of saxophone players in the mm -hmm. world. And and I think one of the biggest challenges is to find your own voice. Right. Um, so that kind of like a singer, when you, you know, when you hear Stevie Wonder know, uh, sing, you don't have to see him. You automatically know that's Stevie. Right. Or you automatically know it's Patti LaBelle or you are, you know, so for saxophone, it, it, it's very challenging to find your voice. And, and that was one of the things that I worked on most because I was, I was Groverized <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> I was sounding just like him. <laughs> we'll, we'll put that in the dictionary. But right. I, I, I get that. But that's a that's a hell of an act to follow and to to yes. try to emulate. Um, yes. Because there are times I, I can I remember the the, the game should name that tune, mm -hmm. and there there are certain Grover tunes I can name that tune in one note because it'd be like Mr. Magic or mm -hmm. I'm, I'm always a part of. Let's not look at all the hits. Let's see if we can find something that are let's say B sides, because Maracas yeah. Beach to me off reed yeah. seed is just uh it's just yes. so good uh yes. I, I encourage people to if you don't have a grover washington junior library you need to start one um yes you, you went to michigan state i'm not going to hold that against you because i'm from cleveland and i'm a buckeye <laughs> fan but that's a whole nother ah. story um it it, it it appears as though education has been important to you you have mm -hmm. uh, a master's you, you got a bachelor's why was that so important to your musical journey well um it, it comes down to just trying to be the best version of myself and trying to continuously learn um which is why to this day i still seek out players who are better than me and try to study with them you know a lot of people say well you've done all this and that but and why are you still taking private lessons because you never stop learning and you never stop growing so that's always been really important to me because there's so much that I don't know <laughs> that I that I want to um to learn and apply to my playing so yeah it's is really really essential what's left for you to learn I'm curious um, about that <laughs> well uh, for example um every every month I, I take a different artist and I study them and I try to emulate what they do or I find at least one or two things that they do really well and I try to do them and so I've, I've found this 
guy. He's been around for a little while, but he's a, a New York saxophonist named Chad LB, who is just monstrous. He plays for Chris Bodie, but he's a huge, I mean, he's a, an incredible straight ahead bebop player. Mm-hmm. And just some of the things that he does theoretically and technically, I cannot do. <laughs> so I mean I was just straight just honest about it. And so I'm I'm studying that. Um there's another player, a young player named um Alex Hahn, mm-hmm. who was on the road with uh with Marcus Miller for quite some time. And he's another one just a phenomenon. He's just I mean, he does some things that I'm like, what in the world? So I'll, you know, I'll try to slow down because I've got, you know, technologies incredible now you can actually put something in and slow it down and mm-hmm. pick it apart and learn it that way um but there's a lot there's a lot that i that i want to continue to learn and develop and apply it to my own playing man it's only gotta be inches because you you're pretty far along and in, in, in uh, doing the music sound really good Appreciate that. Thank you. Speaking of that, we want to give people a sample of what you do and and, and songs that you play. We're going to take a a moment here to play a tune called Affection by our guest, Randy Scott, on the Jazz Flight Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a tune called Affection from our guest today on the Jazz Play Podcast, Randy Scott. Randy, it is it has got to be difficult trying to find your own voice. Yes. Uh, amongst, I don't know, I'm going to mention names. You you know who they are, and you know there oh, yeah. are many, many of them. It seems yes. to me, and this just popped into my head, and maybe the piano's up there, I'm not sure, but the saxophone seems to be the most popular instrument there is mm-hmm. and, and there are hundreds of, of sax players now yes. back in the day when we had grover david sanborn and uh, now names are going to escape me th- mm-hmm. that's a great roster of people to to emulate however trying to emulate them is tough how hard are you working at developing your own style i mean do, are you practicing five six times a week um do you, when you go out on the road, do you pay more attention to your playing or do you just play and, and kind of, no pun intended, and you <laughs> kind of let it flow? Well, um, you know, now that I'm an adult out of college, I don't have, it's like, it's not enough hours in the day, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's more of a challenge now. You know, back then I was able to practice ungodly numbers of hours during the day but now um man it's it's rough so i i spend maybe an hour or two practicing and then i do other things like i produce uh i play keys and and so i sp- i break up the time and allow for that um mm-hmm. sort of creative development as well and um, so it's just a, it's very difficult because I have a family and I mm-hmm. and I also teach school. Um, so it get it becomes really hard. But but to answer your question, um, I mentioned earlier that I I try to listen to a different artist every three to four weeks and mm-hmm. I study them. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a, a saxophonist or even an instrumentalist. It could be a vocalist. And I'll find something that I that they do that's just really sweet, and I try to duplicate it, or I try to sound like them. Um, and I think for for me as a saxophonist, I'm trying to emulate the sound of the human voice, mm-hmm. uh, and that's why I listen to vocalists and all of the nuances and and inflections and their singing and emotion that they bring to singing words or lyrics i try to do that with the horn and um i think a kind what happens is when you do that enough 
and you 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 know you try to emulate so many different people mm -hmm. eventually you do start to find your own sound and your own voice and hopefully um that's happened for me so i'm still i'm always working on it but i feel like i finally found it mm -hmm. <laughs> in in recent years so um but yeah i've been at it a long long time though you're 27 years old it ain't been a long time <laughs> Um, I wish I was 20. <laughs> I've been teaching for 27 years. Have you really? Oh my god. Actually, it's it's actually been 20 29, I think, in total. But yeah, I've been teaching a long time. <laughs> oh. I, I have something to say, but I can't say it for the audience. It'll, 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 we'll talk about it later. Okay. Um, um, who are the vocalists that you that you follow, oh. follow or, or try to emulate? Um Let's see. I love Joe Scott. I love uh, Gregory Porter. Um, I love Layla Hathaway. I love Jonathan Butler. Um, and it's not just singers in those genres. I mean, I listen to, I try to listen to almost every genre uh, for different things. But um, those those are the ones that come off the top of my head right away. Um, even like... Uh, Shania Twain, believe it or not, um, wow. country singer, because, I mean, if you listen to her recordings, they're recorded impeccably, and she sounds like she's sitting right in front of you um, with the way that they're recorded. But some of the things that she does, just um, just the texture of her voice. Um, but that's just an example of, you know, trying to listen outside the box, mm -hmm. you know. Now, you said you've been teaching for 20 plus years. Mm -hmm. what what has that education done for you because obviously do you really need to take English or are you taking a math subject but what has that discipline mm -hmm. how has that discipline affected your playing the discipline of, edu of teaching of education and education and teaching um, well I always because it's been uh, music of course and um, mm -hmm. I've been I've been trying to demonstrate to my students exactly what I want them to do. So for example, if I say, I need you to practice every night for at least 30 minutes, then I have to be doing that too. And they, I want them to see that. So I'm literally, a lot of my practice is during the school day mm -hmm. on, on my prep during my lunch break. And then I dig in when I get home later, but, um, and they see that, mm -hmm. you know, and it, and it, I think that in combination with them seeing me play professionally outside of school and some of the things I'm doing, it really adds to, um, my credibility with them mm -hmm. and the influence that I have over them. It's, it, it's really, really helpful. Um, cause they, they see that I'm doing everything I'm asking them to do. Um, so it, it helps it. Yes, it helps them, but it also helps me, you know, to make sure that I'm on my uh, P's and Q's. And I just recently started uh, guest lecturing at Michigan State University um, as well. So I've, you know, I, and I discovered very quickly that I have to really, really be on top of things because there's some really bright Right, students. A young lady asked me a question that I had to really think about. I mean, it was so it was worded so well. I was like, "Oh my goodness, okay." Yeah. But yeah, it, it just keeps me sharp as well. So, so having that audience, mm -hmm. which isn't necessarily your prime demographic, do they put additional pressure on you to perform when you when you, you have a CD coming out soon? Mm -hmm. Every now and then, are you going back? If I play this, then the students will eat me alive. I need to do this better. Is that an additional? Because I, I, I'm a fan. You're only going to hear from me once in a blue moon. But you got these folks that you see every day, Monday through Friday. And, right. And so you know at some point, somebody is a genius and it's going to go to YouTube or Apple Music. And, ah, I found his song. Let me critique it. Do, do, you, follow, do you find pressure? from that no not not so much um no i haven't they're, they're more critiquing the way that i looked many years ago 
<laughs> you know. <laughs> what? Yeah. So, for example, uh, I I don't know what happened, but I was hitting this. You know, I was much younger, and I was hitting this McDonald's and Dunkin' Donuts every day before and after school, and and uh, had some had some uh, photos out there <laughs> of me about thirty pounds heavier. Okay. And they yeah, and they let me know about that. But they they're not as critical about the music at all. But it's, no. it's, it's <laughs> that's actually pretty good because if I was sitting in your class, I, I would definitely be intimidated. Are there students that you've taught now that you think have a oh. possibility of 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 starting their own career or following you in your footsteps? I have set. I have at least because I actually put a poster together of all of the students that have stayed in touch with me mm -hmm. who I know pursued music professionally after leaving school. And there, the poster is, um, I want to say there's ten, nine or 10 students on that poster. Mm -hmm. um, and they are doing big, I mean, really big things. There's uh, two college professors um, that are teaching music. Uh, there's a drummer who's on tour with a rock band and he's done um all of the major shows the grammys the tonight show all of that mm -hmm. um i've got uh a, another drummer and keyboard player who play for the r&b singer kim mm -hmm. um i mean the list goes on there's so many uh a flute player who's over the uh some major arts organization in Washington, D.C. I can't think of the name of it at the moment. Uh, and I have a tuba player who's on a, on tour for Presido Brass Instruments, and he's touring all over the world playing tuba. So, I mean, it's just amazing some of the things that they've been doing. How, how proud, then, are, are you? <laughs> Extremely. I mean, because it all makes, it all, you know, a lot of times teaching is a, is a thankless job and you don't know the effects you've got on a on a person mm -hmm. at least not immediately and right. so to see that come to fruition after all these years is i mean it's like the icing on the cake all right you were about to release a a, a new project a new cd on april 19th mm -hmm. um one of the songs off there would be called oasis we're mm -hmm. going to give folks a little chance to listen to some of it so right now from Mr. Randy Scott. Here is Oasis on the Jazz Flight Podcast. new music from our guest randy scott on the jazz flight podcast i'm daryl scott tell us about this this new project that will be officially released on april 19th i am so incredibly excited it's my eighth solo album um on the tripping and rhythm records label they're uh, distributed by sony i've been with them since 2011 and um yeah, this this album was very challenging for me to write because I was trying to outdo the last record. Mm -hmm. uh, the last the last record had three um, Billboard number ones, and and I felt the pressure of that to make a record that was at least as good, if not better. And that, and it was a lot of undue pressure I was putting on myself. Mm -hmm. um, so there were many days and nights that I was in this studio doing this twiddling my thumbs after sitting <laughs> i mean i was down here for hours and nothing was i mean i just had a writer's block um and then something clicked and and that's how it is for me you know it it, it comes in waves so mm -hmm. one one or two months i'll be writing like crazy and the next two months i'm nothing just nothing right so so normally i'll do for every record i'll write about 50 songs and wait, then wait I'll, wait wait <laughs> Did all right, you 50 songs. 50? Five zero or more. Um, all right, answer zero. this. And I got to cut. That creates another uh, question. But go ahead. 
So, and of that 50, I'll have my wife come down here and she's a total non-musician. She's a doctor. And I'll say, okay, I need you to rate the, rate the song. You know, she gives it a score of anywhere from one to 10, 10 mm -hmm. being the best, one being the worst. If it's a, if it's anything less than an eight, it gets placed in a folder and it does not make the record. It's not even in the consideration. But the reason I, I write so many is because I want to get the best songs, a, a collection of the best ones. Yes, I write some really horrible songs, <laughs> but the, some of them are just trash. But some of them are really good, but they may not fit right. with the mm -hmm. other songs. So it's kind of, it becomes, after writing all those songs, it becomes a jigsaw puzzle of, of selecting just the right songs that fit together to create just the right vibe mm -hmm. for, the, for the entire album. So that's why I write so many. <laughs> so, and you've done eight albums. Mm -hmm. Great CDs. I don't know what we want to call them today. <laughs> and, and I'm going to say, on an average, there's maybe eight to ten on ten every to, ten to twelve. Ten I to never 12. do, yeah, never do less than ten. So, ten. That's eighty songs. Mm -hmm. But for every song, there's fifty. So you've written, if my math is correct, close to three thousand songs. So my, more my, than that, actually. But yes. Okay. So my question <laughs> is. Uh -huh. And I ask this question of people who perform who have a, 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 a long career. How, so you put these in a folder because they're horrible. Mm -hmm. I'm sure every song is not horrible. There's got to be some borderline songs. Oh, yeah. So yeah. do you ever think I'm going to go back and resurrect, resurrect this song because now it's worthy to be on my new project? Yeah, I have done that. Um, but a lot of times I'll, I'll cause, because I've work with other artists and produce there might be a song in that folder that is perfect for a vocalist that i'm working with or a trumpet player that i'm producing or a guitarist so they i just i don't throw them away but they you know i have to and i always try to come back to them to your point i try to when i'm working on a new project i come back to them just to see if i if i feel something when i hear some of those older songs that i've written Okay, as as I sit here, my mind begins to deviate, and mm -hmm. this is one of those deviations. So at the same time, you have your own music channels on on Apple, Pandora, and Amazon dot com. Yes. Could you? I, I want to get an explanation about why you did those, but could some of those songs that are that are over here in the in the vault in the folder make it to there just to see what kind of reaction you get? Well, because. Yeah, I, I get your point. The only the issue is that um Apple Music, Pandora, um those those uh and, and Amazon where I have the stations, they're they're non interactive, which mm -hmm. means that oh. yeah, it means I can't, you know, you I can't really be. select what is being played, nor right. can the listener. Right. So yeah, they, they normally pick things that are already uh um out there from one of my records. This, so I have a sheet of paper over here that has a list of questions on it. Well, I, I just eliminated five of them. So okay. what's the reason for the channels? Um, why, did, why did you decide to create your own channels? And well, I think, I think what happens is when you start to create a library of music um, those entities like Apple Music and Pandora actually create the channels on your behalf mm -hmm. for you. So I, it wasn't anything that I did. Mm -hmm. um, they they just said, okay, there's now there's a Randy Scott channel <laughs> because of I've, I've got a library of music, so right. I have no control at all over that. Okay, so I'm gonna. I wish that. I did actually. <laughs> Really I, I mean, are there times when you go, why are they playing that? I'm yes. Like, <laughs> yes. And that's why I really wish I had oh. control. <laughs> so when I go to the Randy Scott channel and I hear all these songs, I can go, I don't know if he likes that. I don't know why. I, if I could like email you and go, why is this on there? Right. Um, <laughs> but then, which leads me to my next question. Mm -hmm. So you're teaching, you're playing, you're producing, you're helping other people. Um, 
your wife's a doctor. Mm -hmm. When do you have time? That is a great question. And I don't know if I have an answer, but it's like, I don't, <laughs> I don't, <laughs> I don't sleep much um, because I have to fit in all of that. I, I have to fit in taking care of myself, you know, because as we right. get older, so I'm, I'm literally, I got into biking. So I'm biking 20 to 30 miles every day. So I'm trying to fit that in with everything else. And it's just, it's a challenge, but yeah, to answer your question, I don't know, but I do know that I don't, I don't get enough sleep. There, <laughs> that there is a are, fact. There, I talked to Jakeem Joyner a few months ago, mm -hmm. and he says he starts every day with working out for like a half an hour. And I go, yeah. and then you, when you throw in something we didn't talk about, when you throw in touring, mm -hmm. eh, right? Yeah. Eh, when, when, <laughs> and he says, as he gets older, he don't know what old is. Um, <laughs> I, I just. You keep doing what you're doing because it's working. Thank you. Um, I appreciate I'm, I'm, that. And it really is. And I, I love Oasis. We'll, we'll do our best to get it out there and make sure people hear it and we go from there. Thank but I, I wish you all the best of luck. We will do whatever we can. Um, I bet your wife says every now and then, you need to clean up this studio. At least get it arranged because <laughs> for, fortunately you can't see my office because it's a mess. Um, <laughs> uh, but it's because you constantly move things. Do you, is that room soundproof? So can the rest of the house hear what's going on? Uh, it is soundproof. Um, and they can hear just a little bit, not much. But yeah, it, it's very much soundproof, uh, for sure. <laughs> uh, Randy, I wish you all the best of luck. What's your future hold? Well, um, I... Well, let me say this before I forget for anybody that's in the metro Detroit area. I have an um, album release concert the day the album comes out on the 19th. Um, and uh, tickets are available on eventbrite.com. You just type in my name. Um, but that is the the biggest thing that's coming up right away. Then mm -hmm. I have um, a big show with Will Downing on June 12th, also here in Detroit at uh, the aretha franklin amphitheater mm -hmm. um and then just trying to get out and and promote the record as many places as possible so um a little bit of traveling but staying busy and then hopefully starting on the new record another record <laughs> very soon <laughs> so how long did it take you to do this last record uh it's well i worked on it about two years maybe about two years so hopefully in less time yes. um, that, 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 that the new one will be out, but we will definitely be following your career. Speaking of following your career, how can our listeners, viewers keep abreast of what you are doing from a music standpoint, from, from everything yes. that you do? Uh, the best way is from my website, which is just randyscottonline.com. So, and it's very important that you put online.com. If you just put randyscott.com, it's going to be somebody that looks nothing like me. So randyscottonline.com. <laughs> I did that. Did you? And, 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 and you're right. He looks nothing like you. Right. Uh, the, the, the one guy looks nothing like you. Because I'm like, names are funny things. And what uh -huh. I mean is, you think your name is unique. Mm -hmm. And it's not. And all of a sudden, <laughs> once this, once the... Internet comes out, you start Googling your name and everything, and it's like, I'm not even in the top 125. There you go. <laughs> uh, and then if they, there's another guy, I'm not going to remember his name. Um, he's the opposite of you. Um, mm -hmm. He's got a DJ out of Alabama that uses his name. So he had to put in, I won't say his name, but he put in the word sax. So I'm ah, like, okay. I... I, I <laughs> What what do you do? You just hope you just want people to find it, but we'll put that in the comments that we have so people can stay that. stay stay uh, abreast of what you're doing. Randy, been a pleasure, dude. Oh, thank you, you. I wish you the best of luck. We'll thank do our you. best to um. Let me say, I, I I am not there yet. Okay. But we'll do our best to say if we can get you to Cleveland, trying to small find small halls or things like that. And, yeah, and get awesome. back in touch with with people who who do those things. Um, how are you doing? And I'm 
this is a a tough question because everybody okay. wants to know. Sure. Jazz radio stations are going away. Yes. So how do you promote your music? Is it just your website? How do you get it out there? Well, um, yeah, a lot of it's through social media, um, YouTube. I have a YouTube channel. Um, but then I also rely on the record label um, mm. to do a lot of the promoting of it as well. So, uh, in fact, they do most of the promotion mm. uh, for for the record. But, yeah. I'm just going to put together a Detroit band. We'll have the Scott mm. band opening up, and then we'll have this Detroit group of, of you, BB. So I'm talking to a guy whose last name is Scott, and I've talked to a guy whose first name is Daryl. How about that? Uh, <laughs> and, and, and Lynn Roundtree. Um, nice. Best of luck to you, man. We'll do our Thank part. You. We will um, promote it. it as best we can. Like I said, we'll we'll make the announcement and, and post uh, um, Oasis so that everybody can hear it. And anytime you put anything out, let me know. Um, I will. I will. Thank and, you. And we will put it out there for all of our fans, growing number of fans to see. All right? Sounds good. Thank you so much. Not a problem. Randy Scott, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been listening to the Jazz Flight Podcast. I'm Daryl Scott. We will talk to you next week. Thank you for tuning in to the Jazz Flight Podcast. I hope you enjoy the stories and soulful melodies that grew through the doors of time. If you want to stay connected with the latest updates and episodes, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. Until next time, I'm Daryl Scott.